Hello everybody, welcome to Edit Along With Me in Capture One, where I edit one photograph in Capture One to demonstrate a couple of the tools that are available to you as you are working inside of this editing software. We're gonna be editing a landscape image today and our focus is going to be on masking a more complicated subject, uh, masking the sky, and then doing some color shifting and color editing work. So that's gonna be what we're gonna focus on today. We're gonna come over, and this is the image that we are going to edit. It's a landscape image that I shot several years ago, and it's underexposed. It uh, definitely, I made some mistakes while shooting it and did not get the exposure that I wanted, but the image is still something I'd like to try and salvage and use. So what do we need to do with this image? Well, we need to brighten it, obviously. The tree is going to be of particular importance. I'm gonna to wanna to make it brighter than the surrounding environment by a little bit. I'm gonna to wanna to mask the sky, and I'm also going to want to do a little bit of color shifting as well. So that's what we're going to focus on today. For uh, reference, I am working with the most recent version of Capture One as of recording, which is Capture One version 23. If you're working with a different version, you might see things in slightly different places. So first thing that we are going to do is take a look over here, and I'm going to collapse some of these tools so that it's very easy to be able to see. And I'm looking at my layers tool right here. And this is a, uh, a real top tip. Have your layers tool something that is available in both your adjustments tool tab and I like to have it inside of my color editing tool tab because I use both of these quite a bit. So I'm gonna to come to layers and right now I'm in the background layer. Now if you're working with the new smart adjustments tool that was introduced in 23 or with trying to copy edits from one image to another, of course you'll find out very quickly that these do not transfer with layers. So if we work with the background layer, we can't dial down the totality of that edit, but we do get the opportunity to copy those basic uh, edits to other uh, images. And so there's uh, certainly some reason to do things one way as opposed to another, but I'm gonna do some basic work on the background layer itself. I'm gonna drop down my exposure tool, and I'm going to just bring up my brightness a little bit. Not all the way that I'm going to want, but a little bit so I see what I'm working with, because this is an underexposed image. Next thing, I really need to start masking. So let's take a look at masking this tree. And when we come into it, we're going to see some branches that are poking out everywhere. And realistically, this is one of those things that trying to go through just with the mask drawing tool isn't actually all that great for. We're actually going to be using the magic brush. Now I've made a video about the magic brush before and how it allows us to mask complicated areas more easily than in other softwares. So I'm going to go here to my plus symbol drop down menu and I'm gonna create a new empty adjustment layer. Rename all of your layers. It's just a really good habit to be in so that if you're editing an image and you have five layers, you know what the heck they are. Also, if you come back to an image after a couple years, you know what the layers are because they'll still be there. And now I need to mask the tree. So we are going to start this by coming here to the magic brush tool. I'm gonna click just inside of the tree. It's gonna think for a second and find similar pixels. And we're gonna find, if I press M for mask, that it actually grabbed the majority of the tree really well. I'm gonna come in and reinforce some of the decisions that the masking tool made, uh, clicking in some of these areas. Another nice thing that Capture One does is when it creates these masks, it starts with the mask not being at 100% uh, flow. They're actually kind of lower mask just in case there's a mistake. They blend more nicely into the background. And we can come in and basically re click on an area and make the mask color a little bit bolder. So I'm going to come in here and these are probably going to fail. So we're going to try it. And if I come in here, it's probably going to not know the difference between the branch and the starting area, and it didn't. So we're gonna go and undo that particular movement. And now we do need to use the actual mask drawing tool. So I'm going to take this, I'm gonna come in, and right click, oops, I'm on the wrong tool. Right click to be able to adjust the size. 
and we're gonna see that my hardness uh, of this is brought down a little bit, something that I oftentimes do when I'm drawing a mask. It doesn't make a big difference for uh, drawing these, but opacity and flow really do make a difference. I want my flow from doing this mask to be, I'm gonna bring it probably down a little bit so that if there's an area on the outside uh, of the tree, it doesn't get edited as much. It's just one of those safety precautions. And now I can start drawing in some of these areas. All right. If I need to readjust my size, I of course can do so. And that can be done by right clicking. You'll get this drop down brush. And one thing you want to make sure that you do uh, is make sure your auto mask tool is on so that ideally, if it sees the edge of a tree branch, it actually will uh, define the edge of the mask there. All right, so I've masked the tree. I feel pretty good about that. And now I want to mask the sky. So what we're gonna do is come here to our drop down, new empty adjustment layer. We're gonna come here to our gradient tool. I'm gonna click there. And we wanna make sure that mask viewing is uh, still turned on. It should be from before. Click at the top, drag down, only till the mask is just definitely covering all of the sky. So we of course now have added into this mask some of this area of the mountains and the sand dunes that I don't want. And we're gonna come to the Luma Range tool here to define the mask further. Uh, mixing the Luma Range tool could be done with any mask, but doing it with a gradient mask is the most common. What we're gonna do is make sure that all of the bright areas are included. And I'm gonna start taking away the darker areas just until I get rid of any of the mountainous area that I don't want. And just until I would start to lose part of the sky. Pull it back so that I maintain that sky. Of course, I could re-add it with a brush tool, but that's gonna work pretty well. And now, rename as the sky. Okay, so I have masked the sky, the tree, and the ground effectively. Now, what do I want to do at this point? Well, I'm gonna start with the tree. Uh, the different, the important thing here is that I want the tree to be a certain amount of brightness brighter than the surrounding area and then I can move that total ratio with the background tool. So for instance, if I take the tree and I bring it to about here or so, that still is darker than I want it, but it might be the ratio I want relative to the background. Now I could take the background, grab the exposure tool and brighten it. And the tree is now about the brightness that I want it relative to the background. Well, what about the sky? I can grab the sky and I can make it a little bit brighter still. So now my ratios are starting to feel pretty good. And once the ratio of subject to sky to environment feels good, I can move the totality of the exposure in the background layer and feel pretty confident that I'm going to like the total result. Great. The next thing is, of course, color. Now I've done videos on this channel before about making a custom color profile with the Color Checker Passport. When I made those videos, it was distributed by X-Rite. Uh, since that time, they sold their distribution part of their business to a company called Calibrite, which now actually distributes it, but it's the same product. And I have my, uh, my, um, profile and I'm going to apply that. And that's gonna bring in more yellows and, and other colors that are typically are missing inside of the camera that I shoot with. So uh, if you wanna know more about making custom profiles with the Color Checker Passport, I've got videos on that, check it out. It's a really important part of color workflow. I'll probably come back and redo a video on that one day. So now my basic color is better. And just to remind us where we started from, right? Before, after. So we're feeling pretty good. And by the way, if you don't have this tool, the before and after tool in your uh, toolbar, you really should have it. That focus mask is useful just for being able to know where you are effectively in focus and the before and after. They're really useful tools. Anyway, now what do we want to do? Well, I don't like the color that I produced or that actually was there of the tree. I'd like to change the color here. 
But if I did this just off the background and shifted the hue of greens, I would also shift part of the greenery that might be in the background. So I'm gonna to go to my tree layer. Once I'm there, I'm only shifting color inside of the masked area. I'm gonna to go to the advanced, and I wanna collapse everything else that you see it really effectively, the color editor right here. And I'm gonna to go to the advanced tab. There's a basic, advanced, and there's skin tone. So we are going to use the advanced section. And here's the little color picker. All this does is say, all right, what color do you want? And then what's the range of values that will be affected? And I'm going to shift this so a bunch of greens are affected. And make sure that when I do this edit, it shifts all of the colors from this level of green to this level of yellow. And I get several options. Let's actually pop this back out just so we can see it better. We have how smooth those colors shift the actual hue, the saturation or depth of the color, and how bright that color is. So we can do selective color brightening. What we're gonna do is shift the hue. And I'm gonna start moving this. And I could, of course, one, one trick is to kind of crank it to go too far in a direction to make sure you're moving in the right direction and then pull it back. It's something that I find to be pretty useful. I want this to have a little bit more of an evergreen feel. So I went to about an 8.2. That was my starting point. So if I come back here, that's eight, so very close. Uh, memorizing the number and just typing it in, really fast way to go back and forth in edits, gives me the color here that I want. And I, I'm happy with that, that feels pretty good. So I'm now gonna shift the color of the sky. I wanna change my blues. So we're gonna do the exact same thing. I went to the sky layer, click on the blues, and I'm gonna expand this out. We can work with an expanded color palette here because I'm working inside of a masked area. So what I'm gonna do is I want my blues, maybe maybe I like that blue right there. But now I'm gonna push the saturation of it. And I can do more uh, kind of targeted and therefore more uh, detailed editing as a result. So I'm really liking the way that that's turning out. Now, we can emphasize these choices. You'll notice I didn't push the saturation, just the color here. Uh, and the reason for that is if I push the saturation, it can start to feel unrealistic with the tree, but we can actually examine that. I can take this and if I push my saturation, it kind of goes to this extreme place. Pull it back and I've got the color, maybe I'll push that color saturation a little bit, but it doesn't need to be much. All right. Now, we're gonna come back and I want to add clarity. But I like to add clarity only to my subject in an image. Uh, you can push your clarity a little bit farther doing that and not make the entire thing look like a cartoon. So pushing clarity with just the masked subject. I'll then take my, uh, maybe my background uh, or sometimes another trick is to make a new masked area and we're going to copy the mask from the tree so now that looks like that but now i'm going to invert the mask so we can call this rename not tree and now one thing that i like to do is add dehaze to everything except for the subject because dehaze is another micro contrast Clarity is a micro contrast. Stacking the two, you can push artifacts or you can push things looking unrealistic very quickly. But if I'm just doing this in the background, I actually have quite a bit of capacity to be able to add to this, which is gonna add some contrast. It's going to add color depth to the environment. All right, <clears throat> might add structure to there. Come to the sky, might add structure and I might add contrast to the sky. And if you have one of those uh, brushes for doing a deeper or more dramatic sky, this would be a good time to utilize that. I'm not gonna do one of those in this particular edit. Come to vignette, maybe put in a little bit because sometimes that's nice, but oftentimes that's overdone. And at this point, we say, do I like it or does the tree need to be brighter? And I might push the exposure on the tree a little bit brighter. And then, do I like the overall exposure? And the best way to know that is to have your histogram. And if I take a look, 
right here, I've got a certain amount of overexposed pixels, certain amount of underexposed. It feels pretty nice. If I shift this brighter, I'm gonna be more on the bright side, but that might be what I'm looking for. And last trick that's always nice to do is take the black slider and move it down somewhere between negative five to negative 10 or 15. All right, there's one thing that we still need to take a look at here, and that is that the mask of the tree limbs has really brightened up this edge here that we really don't want. So that's, that is hampering our ability to make the tree brighter. So what do we do? Well, let's take this and we're going to actually adjust the mask. We're gonna to come to our mask erasing tool. We're gonna to increase the size, but we're gonna take the flow down, which the flow is stacking up or adding on to the effect of a mask. So what I wanna do is come in and maybe start taking away some of the mask of the tree limb itself, kinda of like that. And I'm gonna actually press M so that I can kinda of see this a little bit. All right take out that area there. I'm allowing some of this to still be there, some red inside of it. And now that I've done that, oh, I need to take care of this area right here, it looks like. Let's come over there, grab our erase tool, and just do a quick erase through that. All right, so now there's some of the mask left, but not very much. And now I can take the tree and I can still push its exposure a little bit brighter into that kind of area, but I don't have the very strange edge of these tree limbs there. And that gives me the ability to push the exposure, push the contrast, push the clarity of the tree. Okay, so that if you see those types of effects happening, it just means you need to do an adjustment of the mask. Uh, this has been a look at doing a landscape edit. So we've taken a look at masking complicated areas. We've taken a look at masking the sky and doing color shifting. And just as a reminder, this is where we started and this is where we finished. Really not hard to do. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.